Josh, Josh Stevens. MZ, Michael Zorlin. Hi, Josh Stevens. Um, may I ask you a personal question? This is a good one. Fire away. Okay. Um, suddenly, you are a billionaire. Uh, and I don't know how much of a billion, but a, bi a billion, just being even a single billionaire, just even having one billion dollars. Suppose you had, you know, a few hundred billion dollars, like, like, you know, who is it, Bezos, the Amazon guy? Or Gates, uh, even. Yeah, okay. Just suppose you had just, like, unlimited, unbelievable money. Uh, what what would you just... Today, you're, you're Josh, you know, with whatever money you have. And tomorrow, you're Josh, who's fabulously wealthy, a billionaire, you know, from some tech investment or something. I don't know, whatever, whatever it came from. How is your life going to change, and what are you going to do for others who are less fortunate than thou? Well, I would definitely, for starters, uh, uplift and try and build out my own media empires, specifically in the radio world. That would be one line item. I would also try and bolster s projects that help people with regards to housing and transit-oriented development to get Good. people moving. And, yeah, that w those would be my two. Okay, because keys. we're, we're going to make that the theme of this program, actually, because I think that's an interesting thing. What, th some of these people, you know, who have become fabulously wealthy, even a uh, even 100,000 times more fabulously wealthy than they were before the pandemic, mm -hmm. during the pandemic, and because of the pandemic. And what do these people do? Well, some they might be doing a lot of great things, or they might be doing a lot of not so great things, and a lot of insidious things, and you know George Soros type things. There might be some people out there who who point out, who might point out that George Soros is doing things that a lot of people consider good. I happen to think everything the guy does is evil, you know, and I don't understand it, but. But maybe there's things I don't understand. Besides things I don't understand, maybe things I don't know. Anyhow, I thought that would be an interesting topic for By the Saturday the way, special. Yeah, you should open up that envelope. I know you were a little blue last week. I think that could give you a little pick me up. Speaking of being blue last week, uh, did did I bring everybody down around here? I don't know, actually. Because during yesterday, you know, we do a rerun of the of the previous Saturday special on the following Friday, which would have been yesterday from two to four. Right. That's what we normally do. And and the staff said, hey Z, do you really want to replay that? And I said, well sure, why not? I was told by a number of people that it was a pretty good show last Saturday. No, 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 no. It was very depressing and you were down and you were and now you're you're saying it again, so there must be some truth to the fact. Maybe it was a bleepy Saturday special. Maybe it was. I thought it was a good one. I got a number of compliments in, and a number, number of complimentary emails. But, yes, I was down, and I'm still down. But what am I supposed to do? You know, there's nothing I can do about it. By the way, hey, Dave Michaels. Good morning, MZ. Um, so, um, yeah, d maybe, maybe it's going to go over like a lead balloon, my, to my topic for if, if you were an instant multi-billionaire like, like Bezos or that Larry Ellison guy or, you know, or Mark Zuckerberg or, or Jack, what's his name? Dorsey. Uh, Dorsey, yeah, from Twitter. What, what would you do? What would you do with that money? You could do a lot of things for yourself. You could do a lot of things for humanity. What would you do? And I'm, I'm trying to think of what I would do. So that's part of the selfish reason that I'm bringing that up as a topic. Mm. Because I fully expect to become a multi-billionaire one of these days. And I just want to be ready for it. You know? Well, I wish you the best, yeah. <laughs> I really do, MZ. That would be great. Can I answer the question? Yes. I would spend a big chunk of it probably trying to house the, the homeless people around here. I'm so sick of seeing this town become, you know, look like a third world slum, I can't stand it. That's what I would do, number one. Right. Number two, I would get polit politically motivated and uh, start spending. If I was super rich like those guys, I would start countering their uh, um, actions politically. So you would do what you could do, use, use your money. To fight evil. 
to fight evil. And, yes. and you, so you agree with what uh, that, that we're headed in a pretty evil direction? Now, I, I'm, here I am bringing the show down again. But <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. This is this is this is life. Yeah. And part of the charm of KSCO is that we don't sugarcoat anything. And if you disagree with what I'm saying, if you're happy and you think we're going in the right direction, please call, especially call if you, if you have that attitude, because I want to be brought up. I'm tired of being brought down. What about you, Dave Michael? Um, you know, MZ, it is, this is a weird time. It is a weird time. All I want to say is that um, you should do what you can to stay healthy. Make sure your immune system is ready for... The other stuff that you can, that you do have some, you know, control over, and that's your health. God, you are so good at what um, you do. And I would I mean, recommend... You just slid right into that. I would recommend, um, aside from the 90 essential nutrients, getting your uh, vitamin D levels up, vitamin C, and zinc. All of those things are really critical so that you can do something about what's going on right now. And that's making sure that you and your loved ones are healthy. Right now, right now MZ, is a perfect time to stop by. Uh, is the sale still going on today, by the way? You're the boss. Okay, so so yeah, the sale is um, buy your tangy tangerine at regular price, and everything else is free, right? So the, the sale does not apply to the tangy tangerine, but everything else, did I say is free? No. Bu buy your tangy tangerine at regular everything price, else, and everything, everything else, else that you buy is 30% off. Right. Yeah. Okay, now suppose what they want, what they came here for, most people come for BTT. Sure. And they can't have that for anything less than regular price, mm -hmm. except they won't get, have to be charged shipping and all that. But right. um, why don't we let them have that at the 30% off or some sort of a discount? It's really hard to get right that, now. That's why. That's why. We just, that's we the just reason. don't have the you, supply. You, only we can't even get it. Only stupid people mm -hmm. sell something that people are scurrying for at a discount. Right. But, you know, we still have the vitamin C, vitamin D, and zinc which you can get on sale once you buy your tangy tangerine, and that's you, know, you can pick up your the stuff that you need for a really great price. I'll be out there until 2 p.m. today, MZ. Uh, make sure that you do something. You know, this you can do something about your health. You can do something Absolutely. about that. Absolutely. You can't do anything about the election or the results of that. Um, Who but, can? Well, you know that's that's something that I've been wondering too, MZ. You know, I, I've been. I don't know about the results. I'm. I just think that something weird went on. Um, what do you do? If, if you really think that the, the election was stolen from him, what do you do? And that, that's kind of where I am now. I'm not going to say the election was stolen from him because that sounds nutty. But what if it isn't nutty? What if the election was stolen from him? What are you going to do? And what, what I, can you do? What can you do? The only thing you can do rationally is to make sure that you do your part to spread the word. Maybe, to, maybe to, do, maybe do what they pro, they certainly did. They being the the, the com, Chinese Communist Party and big tech and mainstream media. Mm. Do you do you think? I mean, they're they're in each other's pockets. I mean, they're right. Right. Uh, I, I, all I, all I can say is that you need to do your part to get other people thinking like you do. To, yeah. to, to engage in conversation and, uh, you know, converse with the rational ones and see if you can persuade them toward your side because that's what it's going to take. That's the only thing you can do, and, and you got to do it, man. You have to do it. Well, I'd like to think, and obviously I was only kidding earlier. I don't want people to think that I really think I'm going to be a billionaire. No, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be a thousandaire, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but it, I, I do th like to think, I think it's a fun exercise to think if, if I was Bill Gates or if mm. I was Dorsey or if I was Zuckerberg, what would I do? What, what good would I do with, with all my money to, to help the world and right. to help our country? Uh, what would I, would I, I, I like, I still like Trump and I mm. wish he was our president, mm -hmm. you know, but would I work just as hard to get him Elected as they worked so hard to get him not elected. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, what a you, you, we have to do it. We all have to do our part. That we all Whatever have to do our part. part. Whatever that part is, whenever it arrives, it could be a conversation with somebody. It could be, uh, I don't know, attending a, a rally or a meeting. At I'm not so big on that. But whatever it is that you can do, that you're willing to do, do it. That's what you need to do. Yeah. So you said Trump. So that is the perfect segue to checking out what might be in that. Okay. And All right. Ready. Here we All go. All right. Let's see. Are and don't forget ready? to say good morning too. Good. We have to. Is this from a fan? 
No, it was, it's from Josh, Josh Stevens. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a Trump Pence keychain. Oh, oh, that's cool. Oh, nice. Thank you. That was very, very thoughtful. Figured um, that'd be a good pick me up. There, there you are. go, MZ. How can you feel down? Are you still feeling down? No, I'm feeling up. Good. I think it even says uh, keep America great on it still, too. Uh, well, the attitude we need to keep going. We definitely need to keep his message going. I don't think he's going to be around running for president in four more years, but uh, you got to do what you can to, to counteract the direction. Oh, oh, of the, but, the, but he said it. He, he set a stage for others. Yes. Maybe in yes. his relatives, too. You know, maybe Donald Jr. or, or Eric or, or um, Ivanka, mm -hmm. you know. Um, there's or, or maybe other people, you know, who are not pol not political people, who mm -hmm. aren't insiders. But there, what a movement. What a movement is yeah. very, very apparent. And I happen to believe that that movement is bigger than the movement that seems to have secured the presidency now. Right. Do you believe that, too? I believe there's a good chance because if you got to figure if the election was done, that the amount of people, the number of people who actually agree with Trump far outnumber the left. And if the elections are stealable and, and um, they, they can be messed with, then we got to increase those numbers until it's just a, an overwhelming majority. We got to make it so overwhelming that there's no way. But they can see, cheat. if you if you have unlimited money, mm -hmm. and you do have unlimited money with the Chinese Communist Party, they mm -hmm. they run China, and China is the richest. I think they're richer than we are now. Probably, you know, mm -hmm. that we made richer than we are, mm -hmm. you know, because of our our drunken thirst for for cheap 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 bleep. Right. You know. Well, you know, we, we get it cheap because they don't pay their, their employees anything. I mean, here in America, we wouldn't stand for that. Yeah. So, you know, it's because we want, yeah, because we want our cheap stuff. And because we're not willing to pay people 50 cents an hour um, to do the work. Right. Okay. <clears throat> well, MZ, uh, let's see. How can we make this a happy outro? Um, yeah. I'm out in the Dave Cave, 30% off. Buy your tangy tangerine at... Uh, regular price and get 30% off of everything else in the Dave Cave till day until 2. I'll drink to that. Okay, MZ. And I'll be very, very happy. Okay. Join us next hour, Dave Michaels. You Let got us it. know what's going on here. All right, so what does that mean? What does that mean? It means this. Good morning. A brighter day is here. Good morning. May we bring you cheer. We've got time, we've got tunes, we've got time, tunes and temperature. Get up and go, it's today you know, on KSCO Radio. So my personal question to you out there in KSCO land is what would you do if you had unlimited money and unlimited wealth? You know, like, like these, like Zuckerberg, like, like Bezos, like Gates. What would you do? What would you do with that? You know, would, you, would you start a foundation and give away a lot of it? What would you do? Seriously. Good morning. Now stay right here on KSCO Radio. Wait a minute. That's sort of ominous music. Let, let's, let's use the fanfare instead. I don't think I've laughed so hard, and I can't remember the last time I laughed so hard. I I almost um, my insides almost turned to outsides. I was watching Tucker Carlson last night on on Fox News Channel. <laughs> just just thinking about it is cracking me up. Hold on, Wendell and Reno. We're going to go to you first. Yeah, I know you have a good idea here. Um, yeah, so I was watching Tucker Carlson, and he put Gretchen Whitmer on, the governor of, 
is that Michigan? Is it is she the governor of Michigan, Josh? Yes, Hayden? and I hated what she did with the banning of garden tool sales during that time of lockdown. Oh, there's all kinds of horrible things that this woman has done, but something that she did, <laughs> they were making fun. Fox News and Tucker Carlson in particular were making fun of what she did with Santa. She made some sort of a video, that, and, and they super, the title at the bottom, it says, it, it says uh, uh, Whit, Whit, Governor Whitwer um, uses Santa to scare children. <laughs> <laughs> nice. To scare, and what, someone, some, I'm going to Google it right now. I'm sure it, it's play. I want to play it. I want to play that little it's like a 30 second or 40 second clip. I got to play that. But but what was more funny besides the stilted way and the phony just it's just hilarious the the look on her face and the look on Santa's face when they're talking when they're warning the children to to no matter what they do be sure to mask up and be sure to social distance and 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 Santa up at the North Pole is probably well out of uh, concern uh, about getting COVID because it's so cold up there, right? But even so, he's going to be safe. And then it's, and then it, the, the thing at the bottom says, you know, uh, Whitwer Whit 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 uses Santa to scourge. <laughs> Classic. Oh, God. Anyhow, I hope I can find it. Uh, but I'm not very good at multitasking. I'm trying to find to get that now. Maybe someone else out there in KSEO land is, uh, knows what I'm talking about. Maybe they won't <clears throat> find it as ticklish as I do. They probably won't because I have a weird sense of humor. But but it was just, I just couldn't stop laughing. I couldn't stop. It laughed so that I, I laughed so hard that I hurt, and I and I felt my my insides were going to come out of my mouth. Anyhow, welcome to the Saturday special. I'm going to say here, Governor Whitwer, uh, 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 Santa. Maybe it'll come up. Maybe it'll come up here. It says, uh, well, no, it hasn't yet. Well, someone will be able to find it. But anyhow, um, I promised we would go to uh, our good friend Wendell in Reno. And Wendell, how you doing? Happy holidays. Thank you. Same to you. I'm doing real well. I just want to um, say two quick things. Yeah, Tucker Carlson is a real class act, and um, I think I'm he's. I love his comments. I didn't think I would ever appreciate people's comments after you know news clips and you know sound bites and things. Nobody ever did a better job than um, uh, my my hero Paul Harvey. The late great Paul Harvey, uh, from Paul Harvey News and Comment, but um, Tucker is is right up there. I mean, he the way he reacts to things right after they're just they they've just played a soundbite or a video clip or something. Oh, really? Or <laughs> it just cracks me up. That guy deserves all his success. He really does. So what, what, I agree, and he's and he's bold too. He um, he's he's fearless. Um, the reason I called is I wanted to make a suggestion to you and your listeners. This is a great time of year. Well, all year is good to volunteer. And it's one of the most, vol it's one of the most gratifying things you can do. There's so many, uh, areas to volunteer. I've done volunteer work for the schools. I've done volunteer work for the SPCA. And I've also worked as a docent at uh, Henry Cow and another park. And it just gives you such a, a, such a good feeling that you're helping other people. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that, that's wonderful. But Wendell. Yeah. Would you answer my question about what you would do if you were suddenly a billionaire had way you had money for yourself and a hundred generations, you know, going forward. What what would you it do would, with the money? What what good would you do with the money, or what bad would you do with? It? I don't think anybody would would do bad, like I think Soros does with his money. 
Um, and well, if, again, me, if I someone think... disagrees with that, I want you to call 479-1080 and disagree with it and tell me why you think Soros isn't isn't the most evil thing that's hit um, uh, the, the, the world since uh, Hitler. Well, I think the most important thing at this moment is the uh, starving children, especially in our country. And I would do everything I could uh, donating food and money uh, to any organization, or even I might do it on my own and go out and do like uh, Drew Barrymore did she uh, got a truck, rented a little truck, and she handed out food personally to some people oh, in yeah. Africa. Oh, yeah. That sounds pretty cool. And uh, yeah. it just breaks my heart that there's something like, I think it's either four or seven million kids in our country that we claim to be the greatest, you know, wealthiest country in the world. And these kids are going to bed every night hungry. Um that's really tragic, and we need to address that right away. Uh huh. Okay. Very good. Now, who would argue with that? Not me. Well, if they argue with it, they're heartless. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you for calling, and thank you for suggesting that people think about volunteering, not only this time of year, but all during the time of Merry year. Merry Christmas. Hey, you Merry too. Christmas. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Wendell in um, Reno. Our uh, next caller is Nick in Royal Oaks. What I do with the money? What would right. you? Good morning, MZ. Hey, how you doing? Good season greetings. Um, first of all, uh, are you going to be able to get Roy Masters uh, next week or anything? Oh, like we used to. Yeah, I love it. We used to. We used. That was sort of a tradition for a number of years here. We we would have Roy on as the last uh, on the last Saturday special of. You know, I can I can look into it. I, I'm I can glad look to remind it. you. Thank you. Would I, I appreciate the money? it. Nick. Yeah, I I would I look at the Power Valley just because I live here, uh -huh. and all the lands that are threatened to incorporation, that would be the farmlands I'd buy first. I would uh, arrange it so um, the farmers can build a few little tiny homes there and live there, and look over it, and I I turn it over to them like at a quarter price with restrictions like no diesel trucks, no SUVs, all this stuff, no drinking alcohol. I mean, if you're throwing out, if you even do that stuff, you know, like I, I would get that strict. I, I would, and I, I would develop a community that way. What's wrong with that? No, no, it's, it's terrible. You know, you got you got 60 acres. You can you can you can house uh, 40 people. You know, right? And, and then they could they could uh, co-op the tractors and. And there's so much, it's, 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 it's all being turned away in the wrong direction. Yeah, so, why do people not uh, think in those terms instead of vaccinating people for more, for better health? Well, maybe there's something for that, too. I mean, that's yeah. what Gates is all about. I mean, he wants to end world poverty. Well, I, as he said, world bad health, I think, is what he wants. Or maybe he wants to end global par poverty, too. It's but you, when, when I think of Gates, I think of, of vaccines. And I, I remember reading about some things that he's done with vaccines that hurt a lot of people that didn't help them. You well, know, give him my name because he has given out a lot of money, and I, I'm trying to buy these things, and it's just terribly sick that I have the energy to convert it, and, and it doesn't happen. I hear you. All right, okay, thanks. thank you, Nick, in Royal Oaks. Here is Richard in Pacific Grove. I might be headed your way, Richard, because someone told oh, me that do. Pacific Grove is just a wonderful place to take a walk. Oh, so it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Okay. Yeah, you can't you can't go wrong. This is the best place in the world. The freshest air, and that's why I find it really funny where I see all the lunatics wrapping themselves up in masks and then scoffs on top of their masks and running across the street from each other. Uh -huh. it's, it's really the best thing we could be doing right now is taking a nice brisk walk. And saying well, I do that neighbor. every day. I do that every day that I, I can, I, even, so even I, when right. it's raining. You know, that's what umbrellas are for, and that's what raincoats are for. And there you that's go. What, and that's but anyway, Michael, I, I want to—I really wanted to call and say I really appreciate a lot uh, your show last week, and and how you really are looking at what's really uh, the reality of, of the world. We're we're in a in bad shape in this country, and and it's, it's corruption, 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 and and uh, lack of education. When I say that the school system, we know the school system's been taken over for the last forty to sixty years. And uh, 
the, the people don't really have an idea of what's going on. I can't even believe that they don't realize that, you know, we could have a civil war here. This isn't over, Michael. I know you, you know it, but we, we still could have I a civil war. know it. Yeah, I know you do. I know, but I don't think the average person does. I, I think the average person thinks now. Well, everything what is what kind of a civil war? Bullets in the street civil war? You know, where you, where well, if, you if you if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you're dead or maimed for life. I I, I think that that uh, in certain situations, if something like that could happen, because there's a lot of people feeling very disenfranchised with our government in that we're voting one way and they, and then the uh, lawmakers change the the rules. You know. Uh, uh, Kamala Harris says she's going to come take our guns. Uh, there's a lot of people. Afraid. What is really going on here? Now we've got an election that nobody, I don't know anybody who really believes that it was a fair election. You know, if it was a fair election, Michael, well, there, there, are there are a lot of people who feel that way. There are a lot of people who feel, who feel that it was a fair election, Richard. They're, they're not people that you and I hang with, you know. Yeah, well, I, I so, wonder if those people who say that have, have looked around at all, because it just, you know, uh, that old saying about, you know, if it stinks like this, it stinks like that, it stinks, probably is that, you know. So there's just, just so much information out there that says that there's something went on, something went wrong. And like you said, Soros is involved, the Chinese are involved. These are all indicators that... Yeah, that, uh, that's what was, led me, that's what led me to the... Um, the subject question of the day if you were a yeah. billionaire suddenly just un, un, unlimited unlimitedly <laughs> wealthy uh what would you do with your wealth and i'm thinking well, about what soros does with his wealth he decided that he he's pretty effective you got to admit i mean he's pretty effective at at funding you, you know d district attorney elections that that chew that that have the policy that there's no such thing as theft anymore, at least, but it's a totally free, you're off. It isn't even a misdemeanor anymore to steal something up to $1,000 in San Francisco and Los Angeles. You know, right, right. you don't, you don't get, oh, no. it's not a crime, you know, the oh, people, yeah. the people who stole it from you have a reason for stealing and you ought to be ashamed of yourself for having stuff, possessions amounting to that much money. You know. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that mindset? Yeah. Can you, and, and can you imagine uh, all the people? It's it's crazy. Into it? It's totally crazy. But it is the law in San Francisco and now in Los Angeles with the same guy, yeah. whom everybody well, says, yeah. whom people say were has, have been fun, has been funded by George Soros. Do you think that's a lie? Do you think that's not true? What a great See? way! What a great way to take over everything is just have enough money to get to get bad people elected who have who have crazy policies that they have the power to come up with and and institute and enforce what a great, what a great way I, I, I think he's brilliant I, I think he actually did it into my little town here in Pacific Grove I think we've got uh, a couple of people on our council that kind of snuck in and now they're, they're calling themselves social warriors well, before the election, before they were running up, I never heard that term used. And now all of a sudden they're social warriors. So, yeah, and they're from the Berkeley area. They're not, they're not locals. They're not PG people. They've, they've come in here after. Well, just, I've always years. thought PG is, is as liberal as Santa Cruz. Am I wrong? Oh, man. Uh, no, when I first moved here, this was Mr. Conservative. Oh, you Really? Can't. How, and when was that? Uh, I, I moved in 78. And, and in 1978, uh, totally conservative. And even prior to that, Michael, they didn't even have liquor. They wouldn't even allow a liquor store in this town. Uh -huh. Did you know that? We were a dry town until 1969. I had no idea. The town oh. was run by the method. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can give you the whole history. But but you know, I'm trying to get in a lot, you know, Michael. I know you yeah. have a lot of guests. But, you know, what What I would have done is just like I actually recommended it to uh, uh, the little guy Bloomberg in, in New York, you know, and I said, you know, you've got so much hate. Uh, in you, because he does. He's a little, you know, he's very angry about a lot of things. And I said, why don't you help build the infrastructure of New York? Why don't you fix all the bridges? You know, why don't you put all these people to work in, in projects that will make things better for everybody? You know, but that's like banging my head against the wall because that's that's not reality. You know, you had that gentleman call on the other uh, Wendell said about all the starving children. You know, Michael, I've been involved, I, I, and I'm not. I'm not putting myself in any great position, but I've been involved in volunteer work for a long time since I've been up here, basically. 
Yeah. And I can tell you, there's food out there. The problem, the hungry children generally aren't being taken by, taken care of by their parents. Okay. I mean, there are, there are food banks. There are so many different services available. Yeah. But you can't put if you've got drug addicted parents or alcoholics or mentally ill patients. But I, I don't see the numbers. I don't see the kids. I don't see that. That's a, a problem. I mean, I just went out to the, the Veterans Administration out in uh, uh, Marina yesterday and said, hey, you guys need any more clothes? You need anything? They said, no, we got plenty of stuff. You know, they got housing for. for so. I don't know. I, I think the thing we're going to have to deal with in the future, Michael, is, is the population growth. And how, how many people can we really have uh, before uh, something happens to the earth? But, but right now, I, I don't think those problems are, the, are that bad. I think we sell our country out to the Chinese. And, and it, don't be embarrassed to say it. You, you admit it. I, I went back into Long Beach Naval Station. I came out to California, the Long Beach Naval Station, 1965. Yeah. The Chinese, had, the Chinese have a million-year lease on that damn thing. Jeez. Okay? I mean, who would do that? And it was Clinton, obviously. Uh-huh. You know? Uh, yeah. I mean, they've given away so much of our country. We've sold it. And you don't even know who owns anything anymore. I have a friend that uh, his son works in a winery back in uh, Pennsylvania. And, Pennsylvania. And, and the little winery is owned by the Chinese. And he wow. says every six months they come by and they say, you're not producing enough. You're not producing enough. And, and this is what we've done. We've systematically given up this country. So wonderful. How do we get uh, it back? How do we get it back? We got to get rich and then use our money in the opposite way that Soros is using his. I mean, but uh, yeah, well, <laughs> how's well, that going to happen? What you said is we, we have to re-educate ourselves. We have to take over our, our school system again because... Uh, well, my my mother did, edit, did did commentary after commentary about that, you know. Yeah. No, I know. Your mother was brilliant. I loved your mother. You know, I, I have a book. So I have a two or three books. I'm staring at them right now, you know, in my in my bedroom because I still give them away. Yeah, she was brilliant. But yeah. we come from that same school, you know, and she's come through. By the way, we life. still have cases and cases of Kay's brilliant okay. books that I, I wow. should have I should have made a pre we, we bought so many of them. I didn't think it would be possible to buy too many of Kay's books because they are brilliant. And and, yeah, and yeah. if you want them, they make great gifts. Just just come on down to the Dave Cave or to KSCO uh, during the during the week, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, they make really the, good the gifts. The country is the country has changed since your mother uh, was raised. And, and oh, she couldn't she couldn't before. handle this one. You know? No, oh. no, no, no. Yeah, no. He's, we're talking about common sense. We're talking about working. I mean, I've, I've gone to my friends' houses who, with their teenage children, and when I walk in, none of them even say hello to me. They, they have their, their headphones on or they're watching TV. I mean, and, and my friends, unfortunately for them, they, they have never taught their kids uh, how to uh, interact with people. So the yeah. kids don't know. Yeah. I will yell at the kids. I'll go, hey, say hello to me. You know, I'll, I'll get in their face. <laughs> Good. And Good. they look at me like I'm a lunatic. Yeah. You know, but but really, they they don't know. Their parents hadn't taught them, and that's what we've done. We've given up all that stuff. We gave it to our education system. You know, the that's what that's what crazy. a lot of the podcasters do. Uh, my high priced consultant friend that people have heard on KSCO once right. he cracked me up. He told me what a podcaster was. He says a podcaster is somebody in Grand Central Station in New York, very very busy. A hollering, you know, with a microphone saying, hey, I'm, listen, listen to me. I, I have something to, listen to me, listen to me. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> very, very funny. Anyhow, Richard, thank right, you thanks. for calling the Saturday special. Thank you for saying the, the last show wasn't as bad as so many people oh, no, around the radio no. station. Even no, Josh Stevens, because he, he gave me a nice gift to, to make me feel better. Uh, well, which was very thoughtful. Thank you, Josh. Josh Stevens. My pleasure. Yeah, yeah Michael people Zora. were afraid. People were afraid to have conversations. I mean, you know, I get I get thrown off Facebook all the time just because I ask a question. You know, I mean, this is this is you know, <laughs> just asking a question. And they call me a well, why did they, why did they reinstate you? How come you're not permanently banned? I uh, I guess I haven't committed the mortal sin. But what they do is uh, all the people that disagree with me in, in uh, Pacific Grove or the Grovia. They unfriend me. Yeah. So I can, I, I'm writing to nobody. Yeah. I'm well, no, not. Are you saying everybody's unfriended you? No, surely you must. No, no, not. If not I if people. I were on Facebook, I wouldn't wouldn't unfriend you. I wouldn't unfriend somebody who 
unless they were, you know, uh, abusive, you know, to me yeah. personally, I, I would try to uh, engage the person who thinks totally differently from I and try to understand where they're coming from. Engage in discussion, not unfriend them because they, they look at things differently than I do. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Michael, that's, that's, that's what we're losing. Anyway, thank you very much. And let some other people uh, yes, we will. We've got, uh, that was Richard. Uh, we have Christian who's calling. We have Lance in Live Oak and Sean in Live Oak. Please stay on phone. We, we, this won't take long. I want to thank our, our good friend, Kathy the Troll, who sent in a, uh, what I think is exactly what we're looking for. I'm going to take a chance here and bring it up and, and uh, I'll play it. It's, like, it's a link to... Uh, to something that I was laughing hysterically about yesterday. It's taking forever to come up to load in the computer, so maybe I'm not going to be able to do it. Uh, the Mi Mission Governor, uh, uh, Michigan Governor, uh, yeah, invites Santa to tell kids to follow the rules on COVID-19. I have... Why is this internet connection so slow in here, Josh Stevens? No idea, but if you forwarded me the link, maybe I could try it on this computer. Uh, okay, look, I think it just came up. Let's see if let's see if. This Thank is you for joining us. I'm Governor Gretchen Whitmer, and I'm really excited to be here with all of you. And I also know someone who's been really following the rules and making sure that he stays safe and the elves stay safe. And so my special guest is Santa Claus. Hello, boys and girls. How are you? Does anyone have a question for Santa Claus? Santa, do you have to wear a mask? When I'm in my workshop with all my elves, we all are masked up in social distancing. Okay. Hi, Santa. Hi, Santa. Did you leave out cookies and mouth all the centers for the reindeer this year? Yes, please do. Set up carrots and cookies if you can. I also also hand sanitizer if you're done with the cookies and milk. That was a good suggestion. Excuse me, Santa. Is yeah. there coronavirus in your school? Everyone has been testing negative. They, they didn't show You're any of this tested. on Fox News. They I just showed so two little clips. so up north that it might not be getting to us, but we're not going to take any chances. We're all going to mask up. We're all going to wash our hands, and we're all going to stay six feet apart. Thank you. Hi, how can we keep people safe for Christmas? What I would suggest to do is what the governor is telling all the people of the great state of Michigan to do. Social distance, wash your hands, and make sure you wear your masks when you're outside your home. And another way to stay safe during the holiday is to stay home, but call your grandparents and your cousins and your family, and it's the safest way to tell the people you love how much you care about them. This year, it has to look a little bit different so we can stay safe. And I appreciate all of you doing your part. Santa, thank you so much for making time for us today. Let's hear your oh, bus. Oh, ho, oh, ho, 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 ho. Merry oh, Christmas. Oh, oh. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I never thought Hi, I would. Hi, everybody. To see Zoom Santa Claus. Um, yeah, the, the video was fantastic. We, I could ask Jaunty to post that on KSCO.com. But listen, this is really interesting. Thank you, Kathy, uh, for sending this and, and finding it. Uh, and because uh, I was looking, that's why I sound, I sound even more distant and and, and not with it than I normally do. Because I was Googling trying to find this thing, and Kathy Hello. found it right away and sent it to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Kathy. Um, so um, it, it's so different. This is cute. Uh, it's sweet. It was wonderful. But Fox News just made it just made fun of it and ridiculed it and they super I, th this is from the hill that that kathy sent michigan governor invites santa to tell kids to quote follow the rules unquote on covid19 and that's what this whole thing was that i just played right you heard the audio of it's really sweet to see the video also on a, on a zoom call but on Fox News, the super the, that cracked me up so much, the super, the title at the bottom of the screen said, uh, 
uh, uh, Michigan governor uses Santa to scare children. <laughs> I just, I just, people think I'm crazy that I'm so tickled by that, you know? But we it's just a different way of looking at things, right? I that mean, was, that wasn't scaring children. It was, it was just being sweet. We, I never thought we'd see the year where Santa would actually scare kids. <laughs> what a timeline we <laughs> but live But that's in. what, that's what Tucker Carlson's producers decided and Tucker, Car Tucker Carlson himself. Anyhow, I... Listen, you, you have to have a sense of humor and you have to be amused at certain things, even if they seem bizarre things to be amused at. The person who was watching me uh, crack up hysterically and almost lose consciousness, I laughed so hard, couldn't understand what, why, why I thought that was so funny. It, it, you know, Michigan governor uses Santa to scare children. <laughs> Do you understand why? Can you see why I think that's so funny? Oh, easily. Yeah. Well, I, you're not cracking up hysterically like I still am. I, I was earlier, but I'd have to see it. It's one of those in the moment things. God. Like, I, I would have so had to. So you're not going to see it even with what Kathy sent us because it, it's, this wasn't taken from Fox News. I bet I could find it on uh, Tucker's YouTube page. Yeah, yeah do that. Do that because that, that'll. I, I want to laugh even harder because. No matter how bad you feel, if you laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh until you can't stand it anymore and then laugh some more, it's good for your health, I believe. It really, really is. Uh, okay, so let's see here. Let's let's take next, and that would be none other than Sean in Live Oak. Hi, Sean. Hi there. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Hey, you too. You know who you sound, you know, amazingly like? For a second, it was a little eerie. Doctor Future, uh, not Doctor Future, uh, Mister Logic. Do you, do you remember Mister Logic? No, I uh, no, I don't. Uh, yeah, well, you you have you sound a little like him, and Mister Logic did uh, the Thinking Machine on KSCO on and off for many many years until he mysteriously moved, not mysteriously, sadly moved to heaven in 2014, I think. Anyhow, so anyhow, but I didn't mean to interrupt. What'd you call about? Did you call about Bill Whittle? Yeah. So and tell who's Bill Whittle? Oh, he's a YouTuber. And uh, oh, when you were posing your question, if I had a billion dollars, what would I do with it? I would be backing YouTubers like Bill Whittle, Stephen Molyneux, and Louder with Crowder. And... Uh, but uh, I also sent you, uh, forwarded you an email with his latest episode about going gulch. And uh, one of the things that he said is business people. Yeah. If you have employees that vote for the policies that are destroying your business, that if you, when it comes time to decide which employees you're going to keep and which you're not, that they'd be first on the list of the ones that you don't keep. Uh-huh. Well, that makes sense. And uh, Bill Whittle also is kind of doing a project now on what do we do about this fraudulent election going forward. Yeah. And that's, uh, I guess, the link that I sent to you is the maybe part five, but he's just trying to recover from... Uh, the results of this uh, election fraud and what do we do going forward and a lot of people that poo poo this election fraud mm -hmm. uh as you know putting all their hopes in keeping the senate uh, if you were able to steal the presidency in georgia what's what's the big problem about stealing the senate seats exactly exactly uh, you know i i don't mean to pre-mourn thing but there's no question in my mind what's going to happen on January 4th, is it, in Georgia? Yeah, no question. No question. They're, they're, they, you know, the, the same forces that uh, got um, um, uh, Biden and Harris elected are going to take over the Senate. Same forces, because, you know, of everything that Trump has tried to do, every, every path he's taken has been roadblocked. 
But anyhow, yeah, we're getting into... Uh, may I ask you a personal question, Sean, in Live Oak? Did you hear last week's uh, Saturday special? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, okay. All righty. Well, then, thank you for calling this Saturday special, and thank you for listening to it. Okay. Okay, take care. You have a, have a great uh, holiday and everything. All right, uh, Krishna. Krishna! Hi, Krishna! <laughs> Merry Christmas and all that. Yes, how are you feeling? I feel very good. Good. What a pleasure. I feel good because, boy, when in an ordinary Christmas, it's the housewife that walks absolutely, what do you call it, exhausted stress. Uh -huh. Because they have to cook and serve and clean afterwards. So now I can just look at my old husband across from the table, and we can both do ho-hum and laugh. Your poor old husband who has a new book, is that right? No, he doesn't. He doesn't he, what, he, was it an old book? Yeah, writing, I saw it just the he, other day. I saw it something. He's always writing books. He's always writing books. Oh. And I don't even know anymore. Okay. But uh, you'd have to ask him. I sure wish he had continued on the radio. I mean, he is my husband, and half the time I hate him, uh -huh. and then maybe three quarters of the time, and then maybe hate him all the time, but then I fall in love with him desperately. Yeah. And he used to be so bloody good. Then what happened? He's just a, you know. He decided to, he decided to move to writing, on. He just, he d we're talking about Jacques Delacroix. We're talking about Jacques Delacroix. Yeah. And I know, he's who, got these friends. And, and, and when he was a professor, you should see. He has, he has ex-students from all over the world still talking to him, still calling him. And he has all these little nodes of uh, reaching out, you know. Yep. And my son, who, who could not stand California at all, he's... He's become a, ra a rabid righty instead of a lefty. He loves, he, he, you know. He used to be a lefty? And he's my only child. Did, that, he, that, did, he, did, he used, did he used to be a lefty? Never. Oh, okay. He kind of was. He wasn't sure of himself. And then he became right and right and right and right and right. Now I have to tell him to shut up. I know everything that he's telling me already. Right. <laughs> but anyway, he left for, for, for um, Texas. Oh, and a lot of people are doing and, that. A lot yes, of the, a lot of the big tech companies are pulling up stakes here, and, and I want to go to Texas. But well, I my, went. I visited uh, Austin a number of times, which is where a lot of Silicon Valley is going. That's where Alex Jones is based, and that's where I used to visit Alex. I, I don't know, three go. or four times or something. Need probably. more Alex Jones. We do. <clears throat> so anyway, Some people I think Alex is crazy. Some people. I understand. I understand your humor about about Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, using I children. Love it. I love using it. children. You know, to, I can uh, Using I can't Santa stand to scare children. children. I love that. Absolutely, I think that's the best thing that ever ever happened to those kids. I'm telling you that much. But what's funny is that government is doing it now. Now that is funny because they should be doing just that. They're no good at anything else. Uh -huh. That's the only good thing they've done in their lives, I'll tell you that. Scare the kids. And this <sighs> takes me back to, to, to uh, schools. Every time people say the schools are rotten, I say, you did it. Uh -huh. The people that complain are the people that did it. You know, have you known immigrants that come here with no, not two pennies to rub against each other, and they end up buying homes before your average native does? Yes, many Why? times, many times. They Why? have a work ethic, and, and they believe... Exactly. Uh, they and believe that, ethic, that, that, that freedom trumps everything. And they, no, and they are so happy to come to... Around. But I, th that, I don't see that happening as much in the future because this isn't a very free place anymore. No, it's, it's going to happen. You wait and see. This work ethic is thrown around... Too easily. It is the most important thing. It's why our schools are rotten. They, the day the mother left the home because they could not live without two paychecks, so they said to themselves, is the day the school started rotting. 
The school also started rotting the day men left and women took their places. If when Roy I Masters was here with returning, us, he, he would say, hear, hear, and he would say, you're a very bright lady. When, when, I, when I went to school, I was a returning student. I heard what was happening at Indiana University. He said, the worst student on campus are the ones who get an undergraduate degree in uh, education. They are the worst. And then they become teachers. And because of the administrators and because of the, you can blame anybody you want, but it's the teacher. They are uneducated fools. My 12-year-old grandchild knows more about transgender than she knows how to read or write. I was a housewife all my life. My husband was a professor, you know, in a fairly good school, but he didn't make that much money. We have not lived in a house we rented only when we were young. Yeah. As soon as we got in the 30s, we've lived in four houses. Yeah, two years we lived in rent rental. And it was because I was a housewife. Not even that. I set the ethos in the house. My husband set, set the ethos. And the ethos was, you don't go out to eat. You don't buy a new car every year. You don't, you don't um, buy your cuisine art and your, any damn thing that comes up uh, on commercials. We, we went and bought stuff at the flea market. We ate better because of that, because we got fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. My children didn't grow up buying the latest shoes. I told them as soon as I made them, uh, they sat in front of the TV, which was very strictly controlled. Anything, remember this, anything you see in those commercials are things you will never see in your life. Oh unless you get it yourself, right. working hard. Krishna, thank you for calling the Saturday special. I don't want to cut you. We can, we can talk to you next hour if you want, but I do want to get to Frank and San Jose before the top of the hour, yes, which is coming real quick. Yes, please do. I'm just saying things that are all, that everybody knows, but nobody follows. Okay. Thank you for calling 479-1080. Frank in San Jose, uh, what's up? Okay, look, look. Uh, I need more than a minute. Okay, we'll hold you over. We'll point. hold you over. That's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Start. All right. Thank you. Start. Start. Okay. We've got a minute I now. I think you're, uh, you're totally irresponsible as a radio station owner okay. to make a joke. Here, check it out. Okay, do you think there's anything funny about the Holocaust? Of course not. Do you not. think that there's of anything not. funny I'm... about, like, six million Jews being killed by the Germans? Of course not. I'm well, Jewish. Okay, this is just, I'm just beginning. There's not a, a darn thing funny about a coup attempt. In this country, of course, you get it. So, yeah. so if you start out by like going hardy, har, har. Governor Whitmer is, is scaring kids. You do, do you know what this is? This is something very serious happened in Michigan months ago, right? That was a, a plot to kidnap the governor and two of the people who were photographed at that. I remember demonstration. that. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're 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 following along on the tails of that. To no, minimize. you're wrong. You're it's, wrong. And I, and and I well, I agree. We have. I sir? just. Not now. Let, uh, let me hold you and over, and we'll, we'll. I'm looking forward to having to engaging you in a longer conversation. Right. Do, do We're going to be off for about sell six sell minutes. Your snake oil. Go ahead and sell your snake oil. Now you're hitting the below the bank. Now you're hitting below the bank uh, belt. You I'm being it. fair to you. you. It, are you going to wait? Are you going to chase? Are you yeah, going to? Oh, yeah. I'm going to okay. wait. Let's, okay, let's wait. Go. Let's wait. go toe to toe, mister. Okay. Yes, CO News Talk time coming up on 1106. Time now for more Saturday special on your favorite radio station. Josh, Josh Stevens. MZ Michaels. How Willing. are you? And Dave, Dave Michaels. Good morning, MZ. Okay, uh, so you have some more snake oil for us? I or, do, or yes. The, we the, have uh, the first caller on the, sat on the second hour calls us snake oil. What oh, we really? Sell, so, yeah. Well, uh, we don't sell snake oil there, but what uh -huh. we do sell is vitamin and mineral supplements, especially minerals. Uh -huh. If I would say to our caller, whoever said that, um, try a mineral supplement of your choice or come by here and, and I'll give you a sample. Um, try it for yourself. You're going to see 
that it's, it feels fantastic. We're not claiming that it cures or treats anything like that. All I tell you is that it makes you feel great, and there's, it's not magic. It's vitamin B. It's got the whole complex of vitamin B. makes you feel great. Um, gives you energy. It's got probiotics and prebiotics. It's got 85 minerals, 16 vitamins, uh, amino acids. It's got all that stuff in there. It's not snake oil. As a matter of fact, it is very scientifically proven to do what it does, and that's to make you feel great. Terrific. Make you feel great. Yes, so tangy tangerine. I will, I will, I, man, MZ, I could sell tangy tangerine to the Pope. I have no problem. I never, ever, ever will uh, say this is snake oil. It is not snake oil. I don't care. The, the guy's never tried it or he's just speaking because he doesn't know, you know, well, know what he's talking about. Well, he certainly doesn't like what he heard me say well, earlier. Well, maybe that's what it was, but there's no way he can have a problem with but, this. So, no let's, so let's talk about that, which we will, because he's okay. still on hold here. Oh, is he? Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, good. and so uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to give uh, Frank and San Jose a good amount of time here. But All also, right. uh, yeah, Jess, Josh. hour two open. Huh? That we got to do the phone. Yeah, we got to do that too, but... But you have a message? That yes, I have to... a message. Here, we still have some Tangy Tangerine original flavor. Now, the only complaint I get about the Tangy Tangerine is that they don't like the taste. And that's usually the 2.0. It tends to be a little bit sweeter. And the first thing I would recommend is if you, if you already have a can and you don't like the taste, try watering it down. Water it down. It'll taste better. No matter what you do, you want to sip on it. You want to think of it as trickle charging throughout the day, making sure that your body takes in these vitamins and minerals. You don't want to just dump them in there. Um, the original flavor is another option. If you don't like the sweetness of the 2.0, the 2.0 is a slightly better product, though. But if you don't like the taste, the original is not a bad um, option. What makes it a slightly better prod product, the, the 2.0 the, tangy tangerine? The 2.0, I like the flavor of it. So do I. But, but aside, Way better than the first. Aside than from the, the flavor, the, the real hard um, facts that make it better is it has they have probiotics and prebiotics. The 2.0 does. The original does not. So the 2.0 has the probiotics and prebiotics, and it has a higher ORAC score, which means more antioxidants, more vitamin C primarily. Uh, so you have a higher ORAC score, and you have probiotics and prebiotics in the 2.0. I see. Yes, but we have both. So we have the original, which is still very, very popular, and the 2.0 down at the Dave Cave. They are not on sale, but when you do buy your Tangy Tangerine, everything else will be. Buy your Tangy Tangerine. At regular price, everything else would be 30% off. That sounds like a great deal to me. And if you can't make it down here, uh, you can always go to kscohealth.com and order anything you want. Or you might be able to shop down here and whatever you can't pick up on that list, go home, go to kscohealth.com and order from there. And even if you want to just find out more information, it's a great place to go, kscohealth.com. Sounds good to me, Dave Michaels. You'll be here till 2 today. Until 2 p.m., What yes, about sir. next week? Uh, next week, I, I well, next week is Christmas. It I think sure I might is. I might be out here Monday and Tuesday. I'm not sure about that. Uh, okay, well, call the station or call your that number sure. that you uh, said. Eight three one two one eight KSEO. That's two one eight KSEO. You can find out where I am and when I'll be open. Okay, okay that MD. sounds great to me. Thank you, Dave Michaels, <laughs> and we really should start our number two oh, uh, officially here, and this is how we do it. Uh, here, here, here. <laughs> Oh, hello, darling. I hate to hang up on you, but I'm sorry, baby, but I have to go. It's time for that wonderful record show. I'd love to visit, but you'll have to call back. KSCO has the inside track. Okay, here we are welcoming you to hour number two of the Saturday special on your favorite radio station, KSCO. I'm sorry, baby, but I really gotta go to KSCO Radio. Bye. And before we went to the break, we were uh, we had just started a conversation with Frank in uh, San Jose. Frank, we're putting you back on now. Um, and uh, I, I I need to ask you. I want to ask you a question first, and then I want to explain something to you because I think you might have a misunderstanding, but but maybe you don't. Uh, Frank, have you been listening to KSCO for a very long? Yeah, you, I, I've called in many times. Oh, okay. Um, so you've 
have you been been you're a resident in San Jose or you happen to be there now when you're calling? No, no, I, I live in San Jose. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll tell you, look, look, I used to, uh, in, uh, if you've ever seen the white tow trucks like on Highway 17 or 280 or 101. Yes. Okay, those are service trucks. Uh -huh. And uh, they work for the highway patrol. I drove one of those tow trucks for three years. So when you're, you're in a tow truck, you got the radio, you do your, your thing. It could be pretty boring. Okay. Anyway, so, so yeah, I listen to your. I, I listen to. Your so you discovered. A lot. I, 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 I love your radio station. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. I'm not Thank you. I, I'm, I'm way far left. Well, I'm way far left. Okay. But uh, you, you, you you guys really believe in free speech. You really do. Yes. And I, I totally, I love that. And, um, okay. So if I go to any of the other conservative talk things, you know, all those guys sound very scripted and, and, and everything you guys are real people you guys are real people and <laughs> the, the last they, thing in the world that i expected was a testimonial a positive testimonial about ksco from you give, given the last you know no, the, okay, can, the okay, cantankerous nature of the of the last uh, 30 seconds of last hour yeah, but let, yeah, let me but explain to you let me please let me explain to you something that i think okay. you misunderstood okay um what what I saw on Tucker Carlson yesterday that made me laugh hysterically was the the, the title underneath the the um, the, the soundbite, and they they just showed a very small part of this video that uh, Governor Whitwer and uh, and Santa did on this Zoom call with a bunch of children. And I didn't know how long it was, but what they showed l left me with an impression. They, they were poking fun at it. And, yeah. But, but what, what made me laugh is what it said on the bottom. Uh, Governor Whitmer, Whitwer and s uses Santa to scare children. And that, that just tickled me to death. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when Kathy... Um, our, one of our listeners sent me a link to to the actual the full thing. Well, the full thing is like, you know, uh, two or three minutes instead, not not ten seconds, which is what they played on Fox. So Fox uh -huh. definitely took things out of context, and the and what they labeled it, you know, scaring children. It was it was just the opposite. So if you're a left wing guy and you're upset with me for making a joke out of things that shouldn't be made jokes of, you need to understand that I wasn't making... If, if you listen to me after the, playing the whole thing that, that was sent to us by Kathy, one of the listeners, I said, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't scaring children. I was talking to Josh. So even Fox News <laughs> does, does things that are... That, that, they, they spin it their way. Is what I'm yes, saying. Of course. So yeah. I just want to make sure you understand this. And is it true that you didn't understand that? You thought I was poking fun at Whitwer and Santa for, for scaring the children? No, I no, don't no, no. think they no. were scaring the children. Quite the contrary, it was just the opposite. But it still tickled me to see this little thing that said scaring children. <laughs> it still tickles me. I'm sorry. I have a weird sense of humor. What can I say? So. Anyhow, so what did so let's let's have our conversation here. Okay, here's my point. Governor Whitmer had these uh, militia people show up with this plot to kidnap her. Right? Is that funny? Of course not. Was I laughing at that? Of course that? not. Okay, wait a minute. Let's let's back up because this is this is how her name is known in the public over the past few months and this is right that's why we know her name so much is because what happened there two of two of those guys that were involved in that plot were photographed uh at a demonstration at the uh um the, the main the, the capital there in michigan you remember so a couple months before they were i, yeah, I sort of remember plot. something so what happened to them well, they're they're in, they're they're in prison as they should be. Good. Okay. Okay, but no, this is part of my point. The reason why we know Governor Whitmer's name so well 
is because there was a failed coup attempt. That's a coup attempt, okay? Isn't it? That's not funny. It's not a, a damn bit funny. So basically what, what Fox News is doing and what you're helping to do is you guys are trolling Governor Whitmer. She's, she is a victim in this thing, and women in the, in the Internet meme war and all of that are way more often trolled than men are. I'm saying that that coup attempt was not a joke. It's not a laughing matter. And this whole stop the steal thing, that, this, that is a coup attempt. All of this is stop, not a joke. Stop the what thing? Stop the what? Stop the steal. This whole thing that you are engaging in by questioning. Look, I remember 20 years ago, what, just 20 years ago with, with Bush, right, stopping the, the votes in Florida. I remember that. And I remember I was at a bar around midnight when Fox News called the election in Bush's favor. I knew it was like an operation. You think I was happy about that? I wasn't. That went to the Supreme Court. And, and the Democrats, we weren't happy about that. And sure, sure. not only that, you guys had the House, the Senate, and Bush, right? You, you uh, guys ran I, I, everything. Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, my conservative friends were so happy, high-fiving and all that. And you know what you guys said to the Democrats and to us on the other side? Get used to it. Accept reality. Move on. Move on. And we did. Right? Yeah. So you guys— Well, not, not, re not, not really. Not with Trump. I mean, the, the, poor. I'm amazed Trump got anything done at all because he was always having to spend the last, for, for his, his four-year term— defending himself from impeachment and stuff, but he still got some stuff done. You know, He's a disaster. Okay. Well, you, you have every look, right. Look at, look, look at how much damage he's done to this country. I, I think it's just the opposite. Well, but I do know that the country is very violent, and I, and I, have, I was afraid that, when, that if Trump had, had won this election, or, or if he somehow does, which I don't think, I don't hold out much hope for. It's uh, over. That, Oh, you're, I think you're right. I think you're right. Um, but uh, if it wasn't or if it had gone the other way, I think there would be shooting in the streets. I think there would be the, the, the stuff that makes the Antifa stuff look like child's uh, uh, play. Uh, uh. Don't you agree? Okay. You, no. Okay. L l listen, I, there's other people who want to talk, but I want, I want to get one more point across to you. Okay. Do you know the name Andrew Orenheimer? No. Or Weave? Weave. No. Do you know that name? No. Oh, he's a famous American hacker. Okay. Uh, it said that he hacked AT and T. He, he's a brilliant. Uh, he, he's brilliant as far as the technical ability goes to to hack and to do. Okay, there's a Nazi. There's a Nazi website. It's called Daily Stormer. He is the webmaster of that. He has said himself in interviews is what they do there is that they teach kids how to meme. How, how to meme and gif. That's what, a, a gift is like a graphics integrated something. So what it is is that it's teaching. Okay, so what you described is like a Fox News spinning it and putting the thing underneath. Yeah, you can take a serious thing and make it real funny and make it viral on the internet. Well, I don't. He, normal he people. Normal called, people don't wouldn't find that funny. I'm not a normal person. Uh, okay. No, let, no, let, I just let wanted to make it. sure you understood. I think you were you were you were. Uh, misunderstanding what I was laughing about. And, and no, I okay, look, look, look. The whole, the whole point of what I'm saying is that this is a coup attempt. This stop this still thing and the thing that you're engaging in and the whole court okay, thing. Okay, yeah, a coup all against, all uh, a coup against uh, Biden and, and Harris, right? So. Yeah, it's, this is a, uh, look, the, the elections and all, look, come on, man. All of these courts and everything, if these, these judges are serious people. They are bound by law, okay? Now, you can say what you like, and, and Tucker Carlson can, and you guys can engage in all your nonsense. But the courts and the judges, and these are supposed to be serious people, okay? But all this other stuff is not serious. And the main point is this, that the, the main, that election in, in 2000, when that went to the Supreme Court, this is the same thing on the opposite side as that. We weren't happy about that. We weren't happy about that, but we accepted reality and we moved on. You guys are not willing to do that. 
I, I, it, it hasn't even, it's not even January 20th yet. What are you talking about? God, Frank, I love mm -hmm. you, but you're not making any sense now. You're not making any sense. We wouldn't let it, you're saying we won't let it go. It hasn't even started yet. You guys didn't let it go for four years. <laughs> you're the guys who won't let it go. <laughs> don't you, don't accuse us. You're probably right that 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 if uh, um, uh, uh, Biden gets um, you know he becomes is. the president on on January twentieth that that those of us who don't like it what will will we'll be uh, hounding Mr. him and badgering him Mr. just like Mr. he was MZ, what Mr MZ you're too smart you're too smart to play this game cut it out will you okay I'll cut it out you rascal okay that's thank terrible you. <laughs> all right. Thank right, you. Have a good day. I, thank you for I calling. I still love your radio station. Okay? Good. I still love your radio good. station. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Here's uh, Don and Salinas. Hi, Don. Hi, MZ. I've, I've, I've got a, what my take is why you thought this whole thing with the Santa Claus and the governor of Michigan was so funny. It's something called the theater of the absurd. And that's what I consider one of the highest forms of comedy. And you, you usually need a genius like like Mel Brooks or Monty Python to pull it off. But when it springs naturally, like this was, it's like finding a ruby in your backyard. It's just <laughs> gold, you know. It, you, yeah, you, see, that's why you're laughing because it, it is. You know, you know you, I looked at this video, and on its surface, I saw a governor who don't believe in God. Bringing on Santa Claus, who, by the way, looked like Chuck Schumer wearing ladies' glasses. I was thinking that, too. <laughs> you see? Yeah. And it, it just struck me as so funny. It was just funny. And, and, but again, uh, I wasn't laughing at that. I was laughing at, at how Fox framed it with their little title at the bottom. That's what was hysterical to me. Because I, I didn't think they were scaring children then when I just saw the 20-second the, the clip. And now that I saw the two-minute one that Kathy sent me in the, in the email, it's just the opposite. You, we, we weren't trying to scare children. It's just the opposite. So. I, I thought it was I thought it was funny. You know, they're trying to use Santa Claus to convince children to conform to their goofy rules that they're pulling out of their nether regions. Yes. And it, it was just it was just so funny. And then she said, uh, I think she said to tell that she wanted the children to call their grandmothers and husbands. I'm pretty sure she said that. And the, the children have husbands. I mean, it was just it was just ludicrous, the whole thing. And and uh, she looked like Joan Crawford, by the way. Have you noticed that? Uh, She's got this wide, unlinking gaze at the at the camera. You know, oh, it it, it was just it was just so funny. Frank, Frank says that Frank, the last caller, Frank from San Jose, said that um, um, because of the media, uh, Fox in particular, I assume. Uh, we all think of Whitwer, Governor Whitwer, as uh, as someone who was a, a, a failed, uh, who had a failed coup attempt through a, 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 a kidnapping thing that was that was foiled, right? I don't think of her that way. I think of her as someone, a sort of like a female Gavin Newsom, you know, uh, who who likes to take advantage of of her power. You know, yeah, well, I, that, I, I don't think it like I forgot about the whole kidnapping thing until Frank brought well, it up. Well, on that part, you know, that's where Frank did a little bit of theater of the absurd. Somehow, because this happened, this coup attempt happened, we're not supposed to do anything. We're not supposed to laugh at her. We're not supposed to to think bad of her because of this coup attempt, which, by the way, the leader of these guys, was an anarchistic left-wing nut job who posted a video of himself where he damned Trump as a dictator. You know, so they, they, they've got, uh, there's so many clueless people in this world. It's, it's, it, it really is crazy, right. you know. But uh, on the theater of the third, this, I think this is why you like this, KSCO radio so much because you get so you, you you know every once in a while you get a nugget of that coming to you and and I think your sense of humor is when the human race does something really ridiculous even if it if it, there's a disaster connected to it you think it's funny and and that's that's just your sense of humor <laughs> I I guess you're right yeah hey thank you Don and Salinas for okay. calling 
Four seven nine ten eight. What is it, Josh Stevens? Did he did he tell you did he tell you the thing like what that Santa Claus looks like? Uh, what? He looks like Schumer. Chuck, Schumer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He did say. I, that. I busted out laughing when he told me that when I was screening him. Right. That and now I get why. And it's I so think funny. It, I think, but there's lots of reasons why it's funny. But what's not what's funny is the is is Fox's spin on it. Which was not the case. If you if you watch the whole thing, they took it out of context. Anyhow, thank you, Don and Salinas. Uh, Ed in Pacific Grove, you're on KSCO. Oh, hello, uh, MV. Hey. This is uh, this is Ed. I wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and much success to your programming. Right back at you, Ed. Thank you. Okay. But listen, I wanted to just make a, just a couple of observations, and I won't take long. First of all. Really got to give it to you and your effort to provide a fair and balanced uh, information distribution. Fair and balanced. Does that sound familiar as a motto? Yeah. Fox. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but at any rate, uh, I, I appreciate uh, how your different programming will provide different positions and opinions, but also, too, when it comes to the programming that you head up, it always looks at it from a different perspective. And that's all it can do is fair and balanced. You know, I think a lot of folks have not spent time uh, in the foxholes uh, and what have you overseas remembering what the country is all about and why these things were done to enable to be give, give them the, the opportunity to express their opinion, right or wrong. Right. Uh, I think that's sorely lacking. But let me transition into the next piece on that, was that the Veterans Transition Council – is probably a very effective organization uh, to help veterans with reference to job training, veterans' efforts, uh, housing, et cetera, et cetera. And I noticed over the last couple of years that the local uh, uh, city councils uh, between the Bay and here are now trying to affect that same type of, of uh, organizational structure. Uh, so, it's, I, and, and this prompted my comment from my, from my uh, I think I overheard either Josh uh, Stevens or Dave Michaels uh, about how to uh, help people, which later went into helping children. Yeah. Um, and the third, and the third uh, observation was you had a speaker, I believe uh, she was Chinese uh, by her accent, and she's quite right. Uh, you know, I think we've gone into uh, periods of entitlement for the, for the last couple of generations. And that, but there are people who have worked hard and recognized, especially foreigners, not only just homegrown Americans, that you've got to earn your way through. It is not a country of entitlements. And that's basically my general observation. Keep up the great work, MV. Thank you very much, Ed, for the kind words here. Very much appreciated. Al in West, si West Side Al. Holy Christmas. Haven't heard from you in a while. Hey, really? All right. How oh, no, doing? it's not the West Side Al. It's a different, it's Al on the West Side. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not the voice I expected, but go ahead. Thanks for calling 479-1080. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm with you, MD. You know what it reminded me of was the scene in uh, Godfather. I don't know if you saw that, the one with Pacino and Brando. There's a scene that just cracks me up where... Uh, Brando is the old man, right? Uh-huh. Puts on fake teeth. Uh-huh. And then tries to scare his little grandkid. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, in the garden right there. Yeah, I remember that. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. I, bring up, you know, I was straight like that. I had an uncle fake putting the old nail up the nose from the side. Scared the hell out of me. Right. <laughs> right, but... A anyhow, you know, I, I have to do this. I have to do this. Members of five families, what did I do to deserve this? Uh, uh, anyhow, you, you know what I'm saying. So. Hey, right on. MJ, you the one that does the singing? Or the yes, and Craig in San Jose has a song request, apparently. Uh, he's up a <laughs> couple from now here. Yes, I do singing, I, and much to, much to people's, you know, revolt. My, and they, they tend, some of them lose their lunch when I sing. Well, you know, I'd love to hear you try Muddy Waters Hoochie Coochie Man. I think <sighs> it would be really cool. Are you I'm, into thank that? you. No, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with it. So, you know, I'd have to 
listen to it a few times, and then decide whether I should even try it. Oh, come on. If you could yes, do a very... the old standard. Da, 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 da. It's a woman so my mama. Da, da, da. You know the kind. You recognize it, right? Uh, uh, no, not really, but I'll, I'll check it out. I will. And Josh Stevens won't allow me to forget, I guarantee you. Thank you, though, well, I want... for, for suggesting. Because want... it does make me happy to sing. And, and it, it, some people say I, I ought to be ashamed of myself for subjecting the audience to that because a very no. small percentage of the audience likes my singing. But mo like mo old... most, of, most of the audience uh, puts, up, uh, pushed up, puts up with it, and some of, some of the audience uh, moves to another station permanently. Well, you know what? I'm not judging it on a musical level. I see where your heart's coming from, and it's fun, man, and I get a kick out of it, you know, so it's all good. It's a good energy, and I've always felt that about you and FMC. You always had a good energy about you, and I really appreciate what you do and that you're an independent station means a lot to me, so, you know, I, I feel like I'm getting some good info from you guys, from the various all the great hosts you got from Tammy to Charlie and so on, you know, when, but I really appreciate it. I think it's a fantastic station. And Thank oh, you, Al, last, on the west side. Oh, yeah, okay, one other thing, yeah. Thing, could you give us a brief rundown on the history of that building, the station, like, you know, when it was first built in 47? And That's when it was it. first built. You know as much as I do. It's I, Billy is, is here. Is Billy still here, Josh Stevens? Billy's the guy who can give it. He's our resident historian. So uh, we can ask if he, he, Billy is very, very busy f f plugging the autumn. Oh, here he Oh, here he is. Billy! Hi, Billy. Okay. Hello. Okay, yeah, uh, Al, Al in the West Side as opposed to West Side Al wants to know the history of the KSCO building, he, other than that it was built in 47. What do you know? Uh, this is a, a RCA studio plant design. RCA, uh, the Radio Corporation of America, came up with five uh, studio plant designs that they sent out to various... When somebody wanted to build a radio station and they wanted to build, build it with RCA broadcast equipment, RCA offered the plans for six, well, for five different versions of a radio station. This is Studio Plant Design A. It is an exact copy of the ground floor of the original WNBC in New York. Um, w the studio that Michael and I are sitting in is what we call, we now call the talk studio, but on the plan design, it's called the performance room. And it, it is built specifically to be mic'd by one RCA ribbon microphone in the middle of the room, and it will mic an entire orchestra. Oh, my God. That's how you get that great sound. That's right. The, if, if we clap our hands like this, there's virtually no echo in this room. That's the way it's designed. And so... Oh. And so we have, the, the, the radio station has, uh, in its original design, four studios. The control room, the newsroom, the production room, and the performance room. If you look at it from on top, looking down, the building is built in two wings. One wing is all the studio and performance rooms. One wing is all the offices. And that's the way RCA designed it because the talent was never interfered with by the office staff. There's one little room in the front of the building. If you, if you drive up to the parking lot and you see there's a little room that looks like it has a refrigerator in it and all that, that's the original teletype room where we kept all of our uh, news, uh, uh, like Associated Press, UPI, and the original uh, EBS system, which when I came to work here was emergency still... Emergency broadcast system. Yeah, yeah, emergency broadcast system. The, we, we had a teletype that was labeled Connell Rad, And that was the original uh, emergency broadcast system notification teletype. That one came directly from the state of California until it was finally turned off. 
It's a very interesting wow. building. The 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 transmitter the the station was originally built with a 1000 watt RCA transmitter. We still have yeah. we still have that trans well we have a copy of that transmitter. What happened in 1955 was a doorbell buzzer in the roof of the control room short-circuited and started a small fire in the roof. And what happened was the, the volunteer fire department from Live Oak, back then it was a volunteer fire department, they got on the roof and cut a hole in the roof to see where the fire might be. And when they opened the roof, it, it flamed up, so they poured water on it to put it out. It didn't actually burn any of, any of the structure of the building, but the water damage from the fire department wiped out all the studio equipment. So we have an RCA 1,000-watt tube transmitter in the building, but it's the 1955 replacement transmitter for the original transmitter of the station. But we still have very modern equipment married with very old tube broadcast equipment in the same equipment rack. It's amazing. This place is amazing. Wow. It sure is. Yep. So there you have it. See, are you happy you asked that question? Uh, and Billy did a way better job than I could have. <laughs> I, I'm really impressed because that really uh, answers some questions, and especially the part that you're still running some analog in. Because you're getting a great sound. You know what? Um, Michael Harrison, who does the rap show and, and who is the publisher of Talkers, the industry trade magazine, Bible of the Industry, uh, has said to me on multiple occasions because he visited KSEO a few years ago for the first time, and he's a fun guy. Yeah, uh, he has said this should be on the Gray Line bus tours as a stop for people to go oh, on tours. Of, there is of, and one, hear the radio history. Tours, yeah, there's you know? one more thing I didn't mention, and and we we have you know we have listeners all over the place, and one of our one of our listeners is a fellow who lives up in. Uh, Doggone it, I want to say Livermore or somewhere, one of those towns up north of us, maybe Walnut Creek, somewhere like that. And he's the world expert on pipe organs. His grandfather repair, w went around the world repairing pipe organs. His father did the same thing, and now he's the third generation. He, he repairs like the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. No, yes. really? Yes, he does. He, he goes, lives right here? He lives in California. Oh. And he's, he, he's a fan of old, his hobby is old RCA radio stations, and he did a ton of research a number of years ago, and he came down here, took pictures of our building and measurements and stuff, and he determined, that's how come I know all this information about the studio plants. Oh. Well, this fellow told me, and I believe him because he, he, this is his hobby, he told me that this is the last RCA studio plant on the air in the world. This is it. There's, 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 still, there's still the ground floor at the BBC in London. That's a broadcast museum. That's an RCA studio design. And there is Radio Quito in Ecuador, which is a boarded-up building which is not in use on top of a mountain in Ecuador. And there's us, and we're still on the air. And that's the vibe I got from when I pulled up to the Dave Cave. I looked at it from outside. I thought, man, this is like a historic landmark well they tried <laughs> and they succeeded <laughs> oh did they i, I you didn't know that no i didn't know that did yes. they turn it into a landmark oh i didn't know that yeah the building was they started construction in uh, late 1945 and they finished it in 1947 the station went on the air on september 21st 1947 and it went on the air with america no with the star spangled banner playing at the wrong speed <laughs> I have a recording of it. And yeah. the boss was not happy. The original <laughs> boss was easy. Well, he, I'm, I'm the last hire of the original owner of the radio station. I've, I'm the only person alive who's worked for all three owners. And I got to tell you, he told that story to me about two minutes after I came to work here. And he just still wasn't happy about it. And it was, you know, 1947. <laughs> We have a video. If people go to my YouTube channel, ZBSBOSS, -S -S, ZBS Boss, there's a bunch of crazy videos, and one of them there 
is, a, uh, I think it's a six or seven minute uh, video that was produced by, uh, well, the predecessor to Comcast, I, I forget what, the, what, what it was, the cable system, uh, did, a, did a little promotional piece on us. And it shows me when I had, you know, totally dark hair and no gray and everything and did you much still, fatter did, face. Yeah, did you shows still, Vernon. Yeah. Shows Vernon yeah, talk, yeah. Telling, about the, telling that story. Yeah. About and the he, only thing that went wrong uh, on our, the day, first day of sign-on was we played the Star Spangled Banner on the wrong speed. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, so yeah, and, and three weeks after we filmed him in my office on yes. video, he died. He I passed. understand. So, anyhow, Al, uh, in, in Westside, thank you so much for calling, and thank it was great that you were here, Bill, today. You're not Anytime. normally here this time. So uh, uh, appreciate it much. Thank you, Al. And let's, uh, our next caller is going to be Craig in San Jose. Hi, Craig in San Jose. Yeah, hi, Michael. Um, listening to all your old-timer friends call in here. Uh, he forgot to mention the bomb. Wasn't it a bomb shelter in there? Still is. We still have it. Yeah, that's where Dead Doctors Don't Lie comes from. We, we were, we, there was a time we were talking about having Rush come to Santa Cruz. And if he did, he would, we, we told him, we have a bomb shelter that you can broadcast from. So I have the best, I have the best bomb shelter story of all time. Okay. I came to work here in, ninth, in, in late 80, no, late 81. Uh, I was here in time for the flood of 82. Okay. Remember the big flood that wiped out Love Creek and sure. took out the San Lorenzo Bridge and yes. down there by the Boro. Anyway, flooded all of downtown Santa Cruz. Well, so I came to work here and uh, before all that started to happen, the boss was very, the original boss, uh, um, Vernon Berlin, uh, was very proud of his radio station. So he showed me all the stuff, including the bomb shelter. So he takes me down to the bomb shelter. You know, you got to go down these steps, and it's a, you know, it's a three feet thick steel reinforced concrete roof. And, yeah, it's a real bomb shelter, right? So I, we go down, and we're standing in the bomb shelter, and hanging in the closet is a Geiger counter and a hazmat suit, the respirator and all that stuff, and all the remote controls for the, for the generator and stuff. And I'm looking around, and there's a console down there and everything, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a studio that's designed to be used in a nuclear attack, okay? So I'm standing around, and I'm looking at, and there's a little cot. There's a room with a little cot in yeah, there and everything. Yeah, I remember that cot. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm looking around, and I finally had the nerve, because I'd just been hired by this guy, and I didn't really know him yet. And he takes me, and I finally, he goes, what's wrong? And I go, let me get this straight. You want me to come down here in a nuclear attack, take control of the transmitter, put all the controls down here, and broadcast in a nuclear attack? He says, yeah. And I said, okay, I'll do that. I do have a problem, though, Mr. Berlin. I was still calling him Mr. Berlin back then. And he said, well, what's your problem? And I go, there's no bathroom. I'm only going to stay in here long enough to until I have to go to the bathroom, and then I'm not staying in the same studio with my own waste. And he started to laugh. I said, why didn't you build a bathroom in the bomb shelter? He goes, we didn't think about it until it was too late. We poured a lot of concrete, and then we realized there was no bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> you never told me that story. That's great. <laughs> I was flabbergasted that we had a bomb shelter and no bathroom. Yeah. Wow. That's a good reason to be flabbergasted. And by the way, if you're working in the bomb shelter and you have to go to the bathroom, it's a real hike up the stairs. That's exactly <clears throat> right. Anyway. Yeah. Um, anyway. We do have a lagoon, but you know, forget what I said. <laughs> forget, forget that. So, uh, um, so <laughs> did I say a politically incorrect thing? Okay, um, so yeah. uh, Craig, Craig in uh, San Jose didn't mean to, yeah. uh, you know, take away your thunder well, here. Well, you know, you guys aren't going to believe this, but <clears throat> guess who invented that slogan, Santa Cruz, Salinas, Monterey, San Jose, <clears throat> back during the Clinton administration? Remember when you had that all-star lineup on the weekends of Dave Allen, Andy Anderson, and Stan K? Yeah. I told, I told Stan, I go, hey, you know, I'm going to call. I'm, I'm doing those gun show remotes, right? I, I told him I'm, I'm going to say right at the end, you know, when it's news time, Santa Cruz, Salinas, Monterey, San Jose, and Stan said, yeah, that, that's good. That sounds poetic. I don't, I don't know if you believe me or not, but I'm the guy who invented that slogan, Michael. I do believe it, and you're just the guy to have done it. Thank you, Craig. Thank, I, I appreciate <laughs> your letting me know. 
and uh, and we let a bunch and, of other people know. So yeah, I was just a fly by night there, but I did invent that slogan. Good Santa Cruz, Salinas, Monterey. I, yeah, San Jose. But anyway, I do have the song request of <clears throat> see, think Tom Quinn. He comes on at noontime, right? Yeah. Okay, so Manfred Mann, the old Mighty Quinn song. Oh, remember that one? Oh yeah. Uh, can I do that? Let me think. Well, okay, we got three callers, and we don't want to, you know. Okay. I, I, I never like to. The only time I sing is when I have absolutely, unless it's requested. And if it's requested, we have to have no callers because it's disrespectful to the callers. You invite them to call in, and they call in, and then they, they have to listen right. to me singing. You know, so if we yeah, run out of the callers, then, okay, well, we'll try. Thank you. Appreciate it. The okay. mighty Quinn. Yeah, okay. Why not? Okay. Yeah, we, he, well, that, that should be the prom, the opening to his show, actually, don't you think? So that will be yeah, good. Well, you can sing first. That, that would, it's a fun song. I'll sing it. Like. And as yeah. the pro, as the opener to his show. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Here's Rory. Hi, Rory. Hey, MZ. Thanks for taking my call and uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. Yes, sir. Back at there. You. Yes. Hey, I, what prompted me to call was Frank, and and he's right. It's a great. You have a great, not only a historic studio. Oh, my goodness, I knew it was historic. I just had no idea. Um, but you also allow people to speak freely. You don't screen calls. People can speak their minds, and that's becoming less and less common, as we all know, with the uh, overlords on Facebook, Twitter, Google, et cetera, um, screening people's thoughts and, and, and ideas. Yeah. But I did want to say, and I know uh, Don Salinas brought it up, those people that attempted to uh, kidnap uh, uh, Governor Fraulein Forehead, which is one of her nicknames, um, those were left-wing nuts. They were anarchists. One of them had been in prison in Delaware, and some governor in Delaware had pardoned the guy. So these are not like, oh. I wonder if Frank in San right Jose knows Trump. that. Well, he if probably he do doesn't. Yeah, he well, I'm doesn't. sure he'll, that's okay. he'll be thankful that you called then if that's the case. Yeah, a, cursory, a quick cursory research will show it. And then the other thing is, regards the election, it's not over, Okay. Biden, if he becomes president-elect officially, doesn't happen until January 6th. One Congress, one representative, and one senator can challenge the electoral votes from each state. And competing states like Pennsylvania or these states that have had, uh, let's just call them highly suspicious irregularities with their voting on the third. Uh, I know Arizona. Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, at least those three all sent competing Republican electors to the their house, their uh, state houses on on the 14th, and and they're there. Those when you say competing, competing what do you mean? What, what do you mean competing? Well, each so each uh, state has electors, Democrat, Republican. I'm not sure if so if it's only broken up by party, but Arizona. Wisconsin, Pennsylvania didn't just send electors. These are people selected ahead of time to be oh, electors. Okay, okay. They didn't just send the the Democrat ones representing Biden. They sent uh, competing electors. They call them slates of electors. So this thing is far from over. Is it a long shot? Yeah. But we know what happened, and we know. I think the biggest problem is with this whole election, besides the. the just in your face crookedness of the steel is how compromised the Biden family is, Joe in particular with the CCP. Okay. And, and, um, it, that's a, to me, that's a national crisis potential. That guy, Joe Biden today could not get a security plan. Do you agree? Do you agree with Amy from the, uh, China Uber Alice program who, who said, I think brilliantly stated that Joe Biden is the uh, first U.S. president made in China. Yeah, no, absolutely. Go, go look how compromised uh, Hunter is. Just look at the evidence from the laptop from hell. They call it, I think they call it GBY. That's the Chinese, the Chinese communist shorthand, how to compromise somebody. Uh -huh. They do it with money. They do it with uh, sex. 
they record you and then they haven't got hunter biden recording himself i mean this is we are in very very deep trouble if biden assumes the office deep deep trouble and i'm not it's not i don't you know it doesn't make me happy to say that but that's where we are and all you have to do is a little cursory look at the evidence and there's the the guy in i think it was frank said ah there's no evidence it's over but no there's there's several thousand signed affidavits by individual citizens yeah but i think i think it's what's over is that no one's willing to look at those and consider those don't you think well it's over hey no no because you've got the 6th of january and the joint session of congress that's going to happen Okay, Mo Brooks from Alabama and Senator Tuber, I think it's Tuberville, is, they've at least said that they're going to call to objection these uh, electoral votes from these suspicious states. I see. So anyway, we'll, we'll, there'll be time to hash it out, but uh, you guys keep up the good work. And you made me laugh talking about the bad Santa deal. <laughs> and I... <laughs> I'm going to watch it. I got it. No TV one gets that, 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 that that's wasn't what was funny. What was funny is what Fox News said in, in, the, in yeah. the crawler. Well, and think not, about it, though, Michael. Okay, we, everybody knows the virus is a, a challenge to older people with, and young people, I suppose, that have compromised immune systems. Build your immune system. Go see Dave at the cave. Get your vitamins. Take that's your exactly zinc. right. And... And when it hits you, it'll just go right through you like nothing. Yeah. It won't. It'll just move on. So, well, but I, 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 like, I can't. I mean, I, I, th- I believe that could well be true, but we can't I, make I that. We can't people, make that claim and don't. I know people that got it, and it was not that big a deal. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, okay. Josh Stevens wants to say something, uh, Rory. Sure. You mean Schumer clause? <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, Josh, but I will. But, but MZ, you know. Take the vitamins and minerals. I'll be a testimonial. Okay, I had the corona. It came and went. I observed the two I, two weeks staying away from people. The nature and of my job. And you attribute I that it. to uh, you've been a you've been a serious longevity product uh, consumer for years. Absolutely. And years and years. Okay. Absolutely. I'm not I, sure. I, we we will we work. would love to take your testimony, but here's here's what's really sad. I believe that even if we take your your raving testimony about the quality and the effectiveness of the longevity products, I'm not sure we are allowed to use that in our sales and marketing. Oh, I, I just say I got 100% better, Michael. Uh, no, you can't use a cure word for sure. <laughs> I'm not even no, sure. No, no, yeah. Okay, fine. Well, let, let, me, let me put it this way. You, you think about it. My point is being on vitamins and minerals daily yeah. ahead of any kind of infection is going to help you. I start uh, exactly. taking extra yeah. zinc in the uh, midsummer. And if, and you, if had, you use our products, longevity products, you're helping keep KSEO going. Absolutely. If it wasn't for that, pick, KSEO would have been gone 20 years ago yeah. or more. 25 years then, ago. Okay, thank you, Rory. Gotta, all right, you Appreciate guys. Appreciate it. Here's Dave in Live Oak. How you doing, Dave? Hi, is this Michael? Yeah. Oh, hey. How you doing? Great show today. Thank you. Great show. Man, I almost turned it off when that Frank guy from San Jose was doing his thing, but uh, I'm glad I kept I th- it. I think, it's important. I think it's important for people to listen to everything because people have points of view, and most of the time they're very legitimate points of view. So, God, don't argue with them. Let them, let them talk. That's, that's what my philosophy has always yeah. been anyhow. So. That's what you did. That was great, and that's funny. He... Uh, he always opens with, uh, I love you guys because you're free speech. And then he starts with, uh, I'm completely left. And then he starts being condescending and telling you that you're wrong just to even believe everything that we believe in. So anyway, I, you let him speak, but I'm glad you talked about the station after that and the history and everything. That's a, that's a great place you got to be. Yeah, thank you so much, and ha- uh, happy holidays yeah. to you, okay? Take oh, care, yeah, Dave. Thanks Christmas. for calling in. Andres. It's not Andres. It's Andres. Yes, sir. Um, good morning, good evening, uh, afternoon, wherever you're at. Well, if the, you're in Mozambique, it. it's evening. And or I think I think we have rerun. I think we have a growing audience in Mozambique. <laughs> yeah, the numbers they don't lie. Um, the guy that called in from San Jose talking about Governor Whitmer. Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard, and I only listened to this last hour, but I haven't heard anybody mention about the FBI 
people involved in that plot, the supposed coup attempt, which I think was a complete false flag. There was, I think there was five out of the 13 people involved in that kidnapping scheme. Five of them were FBI uh, agents. So really? I think it was. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. When the story first came out there, I thought there was only one person in there that was FBI. Then later, um, I think it was uh, uh, the guy that you got you have in the mornings um, with Rosie. Alex. It. Alex. Alex. He he brought up a, a different article and he said no, it was more than one. It was five of them. So that's that's almost a majority. That's getting close to half of the people involved in that. That scene, could. That's being, close being to theater. a. That's close to a quorum. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So. I don't know. I think she deserves something more than I don't think it was a coup attempt. If it was a real thing, had it been an organic attempt to kidnap her, I wouldn't consider that a coup. That'd be a a retake of the government by the people. A coup is when there's like another government, a deep state coup, Mm -hmm. like a government trying to take over another government. Um, I have an idea for your uh, hygiene what did you call them? The, the oh, the hygiene MG's tip? hygiene tip of the day. Yeah, we started that, but somehow they got lost in the shuffle. Probably the COVID. Ma- mask wearing. So it related to the COVID, you guys sell masks. You also sell essential aromatherapy oils, don't you, for yeah, uh, longevity? We do. Okay. So there's people out there who have really bad breath, and they probably can't stand their own halitosis breath when they wear a mask. So the oh, idea wow. is... <laughs> yeah, and someone it? gave me a gift of poo-pourri recently that I'm supposed oh, to... Poo-pourri? Yeah, <laughs> you know what that is? You, you you spray, you know, number... Is it number two? When you do number two, yeah. you spray it, and then it it smells good. Now, now I've so never met these... anybody who says, who believes that number two smells good. But when you use no. poo-pourri, it does. So that I think that's, that person deserves to get and probably has gotten very, very rich. Hey, Andres, let me move on to Richard last, real quick, okay? Uh, one last thing. You, you, you put the essential oils on the mask so that you breathe the essential oils and you get calm and you don't worry about having to wear a mask and you get a twofer there. You can sell the mask and the oils. You are brilliant. Thank you so much. Okay, so here's Richard in Santa Cruz. Thank you for waiting, Richard. What about what's... Well, uh, there's probably not enough time to discuss how a relative of mine helped fix an election in in Nebraska for Dominion uh, and how he, how he knows the, the programmer that's at, uh, created uh, Smartmatic. Can we but get that programmer on for the next Saturday special, possibly? He's, in, he's a Canadian. So and, what? Uh, I don't. I don't know him personally. Oh well, maybe. Well, I. The and, pers- and and my and my uh, nephew doesn't know that I'm talking about it. Oh. So uh, this is. Uh, he actually worked. Uh, well, uh, he was paid eight thousand dollars. He was a young uh, graduate student working on his doctorate. He he knew the guy that wrote the program of Snartmatic, and he went down. This is in the early two thousands. Yeah. He went down to Omaha. Welcome to Omaha with a team of Canadian young guys like him. Didn't know anything. Oh my. So, God, yeah, you're right. We gotta do, gotta do more time. Maybe a whole show. Thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. You are listening to KSCO Santa Cruz, Salinas, Monterey, San Jose. Coming up is the news. Yeah, town hall news. 